Today I'm going to learn how to do all these infinite animations with Geometry Nodes. And we're going to refresh some maps. So let's do it. Let's get the camera, the light, go to Geometry Nodes, create a new profile. And we are going to use, first of all, a curve line. This will be the base of this tutorial. So let's connect it here. We have a curve line. And now what I want is to move the end at the start position. So I'm going to select Z. Why I'm doing this? Because I want to control the start and the end with factor, and I don't want to control with this. So I'm setting everything at zero to not get confused. So now let's bring set position and let's use factor. So let's bring spline parameter. And here we have factor. So let's connect it to the position. And we have this design. Remember, factor is to control the start and the end of any curve. And factor always goes from 0 to 1. And maybe you're wondering, why is looking like this? Because now we are using the three axes. So the start is at 0, 0, 0, and the end at 1, 1, 1 in the three axes. That's why we have this design. So let's control this better with combine. And let's add it here. So now we can isolate the three axes. And now we have the line going from 0 to 1 in the x axis. If we connect here, it's the same, but in the y axis, from 0 to 1. And if we connect here, the same, but in the z axis. Let's use x, and now what I want is to move this line from right to left and repeat all the time. So to do this, what we're going to do is to use a math node. With this, we can push this line in this axis, but I want to add something here to say only go from here to here and repeat. To do this, we are going to use another math node and select sign. So when we use sign, look, if I select zero and I start increasing this, you will notice that the line goes from one to minus one. So this is one. And here is minus one. So this is a sign movement. If you want to see better, we can use a point. So let's bring a point and let's connect it here. And now you can see better. Basically, we have this movement. Remember, a sign movement is like these waves that goes like this. Always repeating this movement, going from one to minus one. And then we have cosine, that is the same, but with a different offset. So something like this. So to see the difference between sine and cosine, let me select zero. And you can see that when we use sine in X, for example, the start position is zero. However, if we use cosine, as I said, it's the same movement, but with offset. So the start position in zero is one. But if we increase this, it's the same movement. That's the difference between sine and cosine. But it's the same movement. This is really important to understand. So let's select sine. Remember, we can use this in any axis. So now, if I use in y axis, it's the same movement in this axis, and the same with z. So if I select this in z, it's the same, from minus 1 to 1. OK, so if we connect this here, and we make a copy of that, and select cosine, and connect this here, so we can control with this both, and I connect this here in y, we are going to have a circular movement. Look. Why? Because if we use this cosine in y, we have this movement. And this movement with this movement at the same time, we have a circular movement. OK, you know the base. Now, if we use this information with a curved line, what we are doing, remember, we have this line. And also, I'm using cosine to move this line, the start and the end, in this position. So if we connect both, we are moving the start and the end in a circular movement. That's why now looks like this. However, 
we cannot bend this line because only we have two points. So if we want to see this line something like this, what we have to do is to add more samples. So let's use resample. And now we have more points so we can see better this movement. If we increase the resolution, we are going to have a smoother line. And with this, we can animate the factor, the start and the end of this line in a circular movement. I have already a tutorial of this, but this is very important because it's the base to create an infinite movement. So now, how we can increase the length of this? We need to multiply the factor. So if we add here a math node and select multiply, first of all, let's select one. I'm going to set this in zero. So now this is one value, one radian. So if I multiply the factor that goes from zero to one, so remember this is one. If we multiply the factor one by two, then we have the double of the distance, right? If I multiply by three, then this is three. If we want to get half of a cycle, remember always is pi. This is one radian. One radian means that this is a radian and it's like taking this and moving here. I'm going to show you a GIF to show you how it works. So to get this exactly half cycle, if we use pi, remember pi is 3.14, etc. Then if we multiply the factor by this number, so we can write just pi, we get exactly half cycle. So if we want to close this cycle, then we need to pi, right? So let's multiply by two times pi. So now we have all the curve line closed. Thanks, we are multiplying the factor by 2 pi. By the way, also this number, always remember, is the same that writing this word. So with this, we can control the length. If you want to make it open, then decrease this number. So you can leave it like this. If you want more resolution, remember, increase this. And with this, we can animate it, as you can see. We can open it more if you want. So you get the idea, right? Okay. Let's select Tau. Now, how we can convert this to an infinite design? So to achieve this design, the only thing we have to do is to multiply the sign twice. So here, before sign, let's add another math node and select multiply. Going to select one. And now we have the same. But look at this. If we decrease this, you are going to see something weird. We cannot see too much because we need to increase the length of this line. So, so let's increase this with tau. And now let's try to increase this and see what happens. Can you see this? So if I select two, we are going to get infinite. So this is how we get this design. And if we multiply it by three, we are getting more and more turns. So to get infinite, we multiply only by two. And if you want to see a cool pattern, if we decrease this, for example, if I select 0 0.8, we have this, but to see this nice pattern, we need to increase the length. So if I increase this, look. And we can close this. And I think, if I don't remember, now it's closed. It's this number that more or less, I think it's five times so, so if you're not sure, just add here a math node and let's select multiply and select tau. And here we are going to multiply this number by an integer. So a full number. So if we multiply by one, we have this by two, three, four, five. So the length is this number multiplied by five to get this pattern. And remember, if you want more resolution and you don't want to see like this, then 
we need to add more samples. So let's go here and increase the number of samples. And you will see that now is smoother. And for example, what we can do is to use a point. So let's bring a point. Let's bring joint geometry. Let's connect this point here. And I want this point to follow this pattern. So we can do this. Basically, what we have to do is to use the information of this curve with sample curve. And now what we have to do is basically move the position of this point with the position of the sample curve. So now, thanks to factor, remember factor is the information from the start and the end of all the curve. So if we increase this, we are going to move this point along all the curve until the end. Until we reach one value. And if you want to animate this constantly, what we have to do is to use a scene time and here use a math node and select fraction. And now if we press play, we have this animation. However, it's going too fast. So we need to decrease this. Let me clean a bit this. So to decrease the velocity, let's add here a math node and multiply by, for example, 0 0.5. Let's multiply by less. So now we have a point following all the time this curve, as you can see. And this is going to be update for any design that we're going to use. So if I select, for example, let's come back. I don't remember where it is here. I can change this and select, for example, two. And we have this point following the infinitive. Or I can select three, four, five, etc. I recommend you to play to try to add here multiply. Also, you can add here. Well, now we have the same pattern because it's like not doing anything. But you can play adding multiply before and after to see difference. For example, if we add multiply here, what we can do is to increase the size of this. So you can make it like this or more like an eight. If you want to have this beautiful pattern, this is the key. Also, if we add this here, then we can stretch in this axis. Because remember, we are controlling y, and this is x. That's why when I increase this, it's increasing in this axis because it's the x axis. And this one is the green axis. I add some notes here, so you are going to understand better what is doing everything. And if you want to change the direction of this infinite, to have it in the x-axis, the only thing we have to do is to swap these connections. So let's connect this one here and this one here. And now we have it in this direction. To make it look better, what I'm going to do is to increase this, the amplitude in the x-axis. So we have a better shape. Now, what we can do also is to, let me disconnect this, to add some mesh here. So let's add curve to mesh and let's select, for example, a curve cycle. Let's decrease this and let's enable fill caps. Now the loop is closed, but what we can do, remember, is to open this line. If we select, remember here we are working with the length. Remember, when we have full numbers here, for example, 3, 4, etc., we have tau to pi always will be close. However, if we decrease this, we start opening this pattern. So I'm going to select 2, and I'm going to decrease this, for example, something like that. And now, if we want to animate this, we're going to do it with that. So let me add here animation, and we are going to animate this to create this movement. So we can use keyframes, or if you are lazy like me, we are going to use a scene time. And now if you press play, we have this really cool animation that they never touch each other. If you want to speed this, then let's multiply it. 
by, for example, 2. And we have this really cool animation. And if you want to attach an object at the start, for example, then let's use this point that we have here. But instead of using a scene time to move this point, I'm going to disconnect this and use the factor 1. So now it's at the start. Because what I'm saying is, can you set the position of this point at the factor 1? Or if you want, in the other side, just select here 0. But right now, I want this. So we have this really good effect. And remember, we can convert this point to an instance. So let's do it with instance on points. And for example, let's use an icosphere. And let's decrease this because it will be really big. So something like that. And let's add more subdivisions. And to make it smoother, we can do is to add here set shade smooth. And now it's smoother. And we can increase a bit this, maybe more subdivisions. And maybe decrease the radius. So something like this maybe. And now we have this really cool animation. If you want to make this smoother, what we can do is that before converting this to a mesh, add set curve radius and use factor. So let's use a plain parameter, factor, and remember what we are doing right now is just to give in 0 and 1 to the set radius, because at the beginning is 0 and the end is 1. So we have this really cool effect. And if you want, you can add materials to have different colors. And if you want to increase this, remember, we can add here a multiply. Math and select multiply. And here you can increase the radius of this trail. And to give you more ideas, this is the same concept that I did you, but I duplicate a line and I just change the color. So we have this effect. As you can see, really cool. And another project I have is this one that basically is, as you can see, is really cool. Look, look at this. Let me show it to you perfectly. So basically, it's like a line of light doing this infinite animation. And I have a tutorial explaining how this works. But basically, here is the same setup. The only thing I did is after that, capture the factor and then use it here in the material view. So we use the factor, I just add this name and use this setup to achieve this design. To do this, we need to have the full loop close it. Really important. And if you don't know how to do this and to understand better, don't worry, I have a tutorial explaining how it works. So I recommend you to see this tutorial and apply it to this infinite design. So I hope you learned something new and you get new ideas to play with these concepts and you understand better now how much worked. So if you like this video, give a like, subscribe, and you can download this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next video.